Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This video is in a four part series on my channel this month about applying to university to study medicine. And in this series, I'm gonna to be touching on work experience and volunteering, extracurriculars, interviews, and personal statements. Just a bit of background, I applied through UCAS last year as an undergraduate, and I applied to the universities of Cambridge, Edinburgh, Exeter, and Cardiff. I received interviews at Cambridge, Exeter and Cardiff and I got offers from all four of my universities and really excitingly I'm starting my first term at the University of Cambridge studying medicine very very soon. I really hope you find this video helpful, I've really tried to make these videos as informative and useful as possible and yeah I really hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for the next episode. Today I'm going to be talking about extracurriculars for medicine and this video isn't going to be as long as some of the other videos in this series just because there's not as much to say about this as perhaps personal statements or interviews but I wanted to still mention it because they are quite an important part of the application for medicine. This video is once again split up into three parts, the first part being extracurriculars, I can't say that word anymore, I've said it too much, that are useful for medicine. The second part is extracurriculars that I mentioned in my application, this is so bad. And then the third part is advice for extracurricular activities for medicine. There we go. You don't even know how many times I just filmed that. As I said, I'm going to start off by talking about extracurriculars that are useful for applying for medicine. The first one that I've got written down is reading relevant books or magazine subscriptions, journals, all that kind of stuff. And this is mainly just to show that you have a real interest in medicine and that you're curious and you want to know more and you want to find out more and that you're actively doing something to learn. The next thing is extra roles at school, such as being head girl or head boy, being part of a committee or running a society or being part of a society. All that kind of stuff shows that you have a sense of responsibility and that you're keen to get involved and get stuck in. Another thing is medical courses or taster days that you've been on. That kind of stuff is really good to put on your personal statement because it shows once again that you've looked into this career and that you really do want to find out more about it, learn more about it and that you've actually done something to achieve that. An obvious one is any jobs that you've had because once again it shows that you're responsible, you can gain skills from having a job, time management, all that kind of stuff. So a job is a really good one to put down. I also put down any notable hobbies such as music or sports, anything that you do regularly and really enjoy. Also on here I have any notable awards that you've won or competitions that you've been a part of because obviously it just shows your achievements, academic or not. And the last thing that I put down are any programmes that you may have been on like NCS or if you've done something like Gap Medics that's a really good thing to put on there. And this list obviously isn't everything that you could put down on your personal statement in terms of extracurriculars, it's just what I came up with. So if there's anything else you obviously want to include, include it. I think just go by if it's relevant and if you can go into depth about it and make it relevant to medicine, put it down. Moving on to extracurriculars that I mentioned in my personal statement and application. First thing is reading a book called A Very Short Introduction to Medical Ethics. That's the only book that I put on my personal statement, partly because number one, it was the only book that I had read that I was like confident in talking about. And number two, I didn't want to overdo it because the more stuff you put on your personal statement, the more stuff you then have to go over and make sure you have talking points about it and make sure that you know in detail about it in case they ask you at interview. I'm just going to tell you what are the books I read in case you're looking for recommendations. So I also read Trust Me I'm a Junior Doctor, I read The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, Do No Harm which is my favourite, I literally say this in like pretty much every uni video but that is such a good book. If you're applying for medicine read it, it's so good just as a book as well as like informative and 
to do with medicine. I also read The Emperor of All Maladies, um, which is a book about cancer. I think that might be it, to be honest. If I forgot anything, I'll put it on the screen. I read most of these books after I sent off my UCAS application and whilst they didn't go on my personal statement, I still wanted to read them just to get like wider knowledge beyond my A-level spec in biology. Like I knew nothing about the history of cancer, I knew nothing about neurobiology, so I thought that it would be good to just read around my subject a little bit. Just so at interview, if we were talking about extra reading, I would be able to bring in these new concepts beyond what I put on my personal statement, especially because I only had one book. I didn't want to just have that one book to focus on in the interview, but at the same time it also gave me more freedom. There was only one book that I really had to focus on and know properly, and the other ones were like, if I feel like mentioning it, if it comes up in the right context, I can talk about it, but there was no real pressure on me to like know these books really properly because I wasn't really going to get grilled on them because they didn't even know I had read them, if you get me. I also mentioned that I've read The New Scientist. Um, okay, like, yes, I've read The New Scientist. I said that I was an avid reader of The New Scientist, which probably wasn't the best idea to put because was I, like, on every copy of it? No, I wasn't. But, like, it just sounded better, which, okay, don't lie about what you've done. Don't say that you've done something or read something if you haven't, because if they bring it up at interview, you are going to be screwed. I had read copies of The New Scientist, so it was just a bit of an over-exaggeration as to how much I love The New Scientist. I also wrote that I was part of the charity committee at my school, because I was, um, and I thought that it was quite fitting, because not only did I I write that it strengthened my teamwork skills so like I gained skills from doing it but also it's a charity committee I thought that was quite like relevant to medicine and helping people you know next thing I've got on my list is form liaison officer and the form liaison officer coordinator which were responsibility posts at my school so for the form liaison officer basically you just ran um, sessions for the lower years one form time a week um, just like an activity session for them and the coordinator there were like three of us that basically just oversaw all the other officers and I tried to mention both of those in my personal statement without like taking up too much space so I related the flow job to organizational skills and then the coordinator job to leadership skills so again relating all these things to skills that I've gained or like refined. Another thing I talked about was running MedSoc and at the point where I was writing this personal statement I wasn't actually running MedSoc so I think I wrote encouraged me to run my school's medical society this year. I put down that I'm going to do it like I'm in the process whilst you're reading this personal statement I'm running medical society and I thought that it was good to put down because not only am my running med sock so it's kind of leadership but I'm also part of the medical society so it's like commitment to studying medicine and then also it's allowing me to like research more into the field and it shows that I actually want to be doing this. I also mentioned my YouTube channel on my personal statement like I didn't say I have a YouTube channel but I did want to mention it because it's my hobby and I wanted to put something down that's not just completely medicine, 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 medicine. Um, like I have a life outside of medicine, you know? So with regards to the YouTube, I said that I relish video blogging um, and I related that to my self-motivation and eagerness to learn. I had a quick little insert in my personal statement about my job. So I had a job as a cleaner and I obviously did want to mention it because it was a big part of my life. I had a job Monday through Friday. It may seem like I have no life, but that's because I have a job. Um, and I think I related that to time management. In my volunteering paragraph, I talked a little bit about the NCS Social Action Project because I loved NCS and I went on it, so I wanted to mention it. And we did a social action project for a charity for disabled children, so I thought that that was really appropriate as well. I put that alongside my Bernardo's volunteering because 
I didn't have enough space to like go into detail about both of them and I just talked about communication skills with a broad range of individuals. The last extracurricular that I talked about on my personal statement, which it wasn't in this order, don't worry my personal statement was not a total mess, um, but I talked about a medical course that I went on which was a three-day course run by a nearby hospital. Finally, I'm gonna talk about how to use extracurriculars in your university application, which I have touched on throughout this video, so this is just gonna be a bit of regurgitating the same stuff. This first thing is a given, and that is to always relate extracurricular activities to learning something or gaining skills or demonstrating skills that you already have or strengthening skills and you want to also relate these skills to medicine so not only say like I gained teamwork skills but explain why teamwork skills are important in the role of a doctor and this is where you can relate different bits of your personal statement together for example if you say that um, on work experience you saw the need for teamwork because of xyz that you actually saw so say what you saw or what you did and you have gained teamwork skills by doing this activity you know and it all just kind of like flows nicely and also if you have space again because space is limited but if you do have the characters left explain exactly how you gained the skills so don't just say for example i gained teamwork skills because i was part of this say what exactly it was about being part of that committee, society, whatever, made you gain teamwork skills and go into more depth about what certain activities entail. The next point is following on from this, but it's expand on what you've done. So if you've read a book, say what you learned from it, say what take home messages you got from that book and also go maybe more into detail about your personal interests. So, for example, I wrote that I was an avid reader of the New Scientist, blah, 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 current affairs, whatever. And then I talked about how, for me, of notable interest were the antibiotic resistance development and the search for new cancer therapies. And going into more detail like that not only gives a better insight into you as a person and what your interests are, but it also might give the university a basis for talking points at interviews so it kind of gives you a degree of control to a point because if they decide that they want to talk about a topic in medicine they might be inclined to talk about something that you put on your personal statement to number one make sure that you actually know stuff about it and you didn't just write that for the sake of it but also because you put it down there so maybe they'd assume that they could have like a good solid conversation with you about it and it also means that you have one or two topics to focus on and read around so you're not completely like in the woods about what you're supposed to be doing. Going back to the previous point of expanding, if you went on a course, say what particular things in that course really stood out to you, what really interested you, and you can also follow up on said course with something like reading further into one of the things that you saw that really interested you. So for example, personally, um, I wrote that I went to that 3D medical course where I was particularly interested by the workshop on ethical scenarios and then I followed that up by, inspired by this, I read the book on medical ethics, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it kind of shows that you're not just going to these courses for the sake of it and that you're actually interested in it and invested in it because you're reading it further about something that you saw and people don't really do that if they don't care and they're not interested. So with regards to putting hobbies into your personal statement, I'd say that it's important to put at least one in if not a couple just to show that you as a person are not just academics and are not just medicine and there's more to you than just school and work because especially in the study of medicine it's so hard and life as a doctor is challenging you need to have a means of relaxation and something to do to unwind besides just studying. However, by the same token, you don't want to overdo it with your hobbies. And also with your hobbies, make sure that they're relevant in some way. And realistically, there's probably a way that you can make everything relevant in some sense. Even like, 
I like solving Rubik's cubes means that I'm a good problem solver, you know, stuff like that. You just have to make sure that you do relate those things. You can't really just say like, I like solving Rubik's cubes or I like gardening without following it up with why that's actually relevant to your personal statement and to your university application for medicine. And that really applies to all extracurriculars that you mention. That's all I wanted to say in this video. I know it may not have been as useful as some of the other videos that I have planned in this series, as I said at the beginning, but even if it helped one or two people, that's good. I do hope that you found this video in some way useful and if you did then be sure to give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my channel, the button is below this video and my social medias are always in the description box. Thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned for the next medical series video which will be very very soon. Bye!